Hello, Cohort 2021. So today I'm going to show you how to access our online designer for yearbook so that you can start testing it out, practicing, trying new things so that next year we can start designing all the pages. So the first thing you're going to do is go into your internet and type in walsworthyearbooks.com, Walsworth with one L. All of this you can find in the slideshow I'm showing today and also in your uh, Google Classroom. So then once you get to this page, you're going to click log in. And your first time logging in, your username, no matter what, is always going to be the beginning of your New Visions email before the at symbol. Okay? And then your password to start out the first time you do it is going to be yearbook, all lowercase, but then it's going to ask you to change your password after that. So please make sure that whatever you change your password to moving forward is something that you will remember. Once you log in, you should see a screen that looks similar to this. I have more um, capabilities than you do as the advisor. Um, but what you would do is you would go straight down. You can play around and look at some of these other things if you'd like, but our main focus is online designer. So you would click on online designer and then it's going to take you to this. It's going to open up a new window. Okay. Um, you're going to see a bunch of different things. You're going to see online designer. You're going to see photos. Okay. You're going to see artwork. We're going to actually play around with all of that. Um, but before I do that, it's still in 2019-2020 for me. You guys should only be going to 2020-2021, hopefully. But if not, you'll see this little tab. Make sure it says 2020-2021. So now I'm going to go into the online designer. And you'll see right now we have a ton of blank pages. So I can see all of the pages. When I create your accounts, I'm going to give each of you one page to play around with, okay? So you'll only see whatever page I assign to you just for um, testing it out so that it doesn't mess with, it. no one's messing with other people's practice pages, okay? Um, so when you see online design, you're gonna see a bunch of different things. First, you're gonna see what pages are blank, which pages have started, proof, approved, submit. Right now, they're all blank, like I said. Um, I did carry over our ladder from last year with what pages, what, what themes we did for each page, but we can change those. Okay, so if I want to um, click on my page, I'd click on my page and go to edit spread and I'd be able to edit. But before I go in and show you how to edit, you're going to see a few other things. If you click on photos, you're going to see I already started creating photo albums with all the photos that I have of all of you. So you will see that we create, I created albums to make it easier. And as I get photos from students and from staff of you guys from the last four years, or when we take pictures, um, we will continue to add albums or add pictures to specific albums. Like if we have another Black History Month show, we would just put all of them into this so that you can you know exactly where to find all of the pictures. So you can look through the photo albums, see what they have, and I'll show you how to upload those photos. You actually also have something called artwork. Um, when you go into artwork, you're gonna see two things. You're gonna see click art and you're gonna see backgrounds. Every page, we're gonna wanna have a background. If you wanna look through the backgrounds in an easier format, you can go to backgrounds and see which ones. And what's cool about that is, um, Say I really liked this background, right? I'd click on it and I could actually write down this code right here, CA1212, so that when I go into designing my page, instead of having to look through all the things again, I could just type in that number and it would bring me straight to that background that I could use. Okay, so you have double page, single page, and then um, color and black and white. And then you also have click art. What's nice about click art is if we don't want just photos on the page or just text and we want some digital images, there are a bunch of them. Um, it's not loading right now, but I'll show you. Oh, there you go. So they have different click art and they even have those in specific folders um, based on categories. So if we had a page which was everyone eating food somewhere, we could put some of these around the page to kind of add a little bit to it. Um, we also have something called the plan book which is where I'm going to put the due dates for the pages as we come up with them, um, what status they're in, whether they've been completed, all of that, because we want to start sending pages to print throughout the course of the, our time together. 
Um, and then I will also say who is assigned to this page. So I can assign one, to, one or more people to a page. Um, and then portraits we don't have to worry about. So we're going to go back to online design. Um, and I'm going to just click on a page so I can show you what it looks like. Edit spread. So I would click on the page that I was assigned and click edit spread. And then it's going to take me to this screen. It's just loading. So right now you're going to see blank two blank pages right next to each other. First thing I'm going to want to do is I am going to want to go to the right hand side and I'm going to go to where it says backgrounds on towards the bottom. So I can go to backgrounds. Because I have a spread, because it's two pages, it's a spread. If it was one page or if, or if I was doing two separate things. So if both of these are have something in common, like I'm doing two pages of the Thanksgiving thing, then I would just do the same page for both. If I have one is Black History Month and one is theater class, then I'm going to want two separate pages. So I would actually say I wanted this one. I would click on it, drag it over. Okay. And then I would, I could tint it, which means that it would become a little less dark. Okay. And if I didn't like it, I could remove the background. And I could scroll through these and see a bunch of different ones. Okay. So you got the idea with that. Then you would also, you could also choose a template. Usually after I create a background, I choose a template. There are a bunch of different, you can kind of play around with these. Um, we actually have a book that you can use to find templates, but say I choose Limitless and I really like this template and you can change anything around about the templates. So I really like this template. I can drag it over. So you just click and drag. I'd click on here and now I have spaces for pictures. I have spaces to change my heading, spaces to put like some captions, um, however I want to do it. If I don't like it, I can click edit Why does that work? Oh, you have to go to select on the left hand side, edit, select all, edit, delete, and all of them would delete. Okay, so you can play around with that a little bit too. Um, some of my favorite templates tend to be ones that are in, I think there's one called collage. So you'll see there's a lot of different templates. Collage is really great for, mo we use this for most of our pages, but if we want to get more crafty with some of them, we are welcome to do so. Um, there's your click art. Portraits we don't have to worry about. Um, so say I want to create something completely from scratch. I can actually go on the left hand side where it says shapes and I can click on a shape and I can create my shapes. Say I want a mix of them. These shapes are what your photos are going to go into. So you can kind of play around with that. Um, you don't want to have anything go into the blue area because that means that it might be trimmed or not put in. Um, if you want text, you can click on text and then click and, and uh, drag and you can change things about the text. So if you have text, you're going to see on the right hand side that you can change the, the size of it. You can change the fonts. Right now we only have two fonts because we need to choose as a group other fonts. We can have up to 30, but there's like hundreds. So we want to see which ones we like the best. Um, and you could even draw things, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can also change the color of the text by clicking on this box and seeing show more and there's a ton of different options. Um, you can put borders around the text, whatever the case may be. And then to put photos in and to play around with that, what you would do is you would go to on the bottom, you're going to see something that says photo tray. I'm going to click photo tray. Now, I have favorites for you, it would just be choose other albums and you would go to 90s, whatever the case may be. I would click on the photo that I want and then I would click it and drag it into the box. Okay. Now if it wasn't sized correctly, first of all I could make the box bigger if I wanted to. So I can go back to select. I can make it bigger. I can also double click on it and I could change. Maybe I just wanted Jaron, right? Or I just wanted Jovenson for whatever reason. I didn't want everyone. Uh, you could click, or it was like lopsided, I could click like that, done, and now I only see him, and I can actually even go like this, and now it's just him, okay? 
Um, if I don't like it, I could remove the photo uh, and do it that way, okay? Um, but at any point in time, you can click edit, delete, and get rid of things that you don't like. So that's pretty much the main focal points of this. Another cool thing for those of you who are editors, you're going to actually get access to pages that other people are designing. If that's the case, you can actually look at their pages. Remember that only one person can be on, on um, the design, uh, design page at a time. So if I'm assigned to this page with Jaron as well, only one of us could be on this at a time. Um, and remember that anything that you play around with and that you want to keep, you want to save at the end before you close out. Otherwise, it will be gone. But if you are an editor and you see the page and you're like, well, I really don't like this or I really like this or whatever the case is, you can click add a sticky and you can actually put the sticky note wherever it is that makes sense. And you can type in. Um, so for this, since there's nothing here, I would say where is the background. Remember this is due in two days, right? I could say that and then what will happen is here's my sticky. I can put it right there and whoever opens up this page and is in charge of it can see my sticky note. They can either respond to it, they can delete the sticky after they have already completed the task. Okay, So that's our way of giving feedback and notes other than just emailing people. Uh, obviously, as you're playing around with this, there's no real way of breaking it. So as long as you play around with it and don't save it at least, at least this time around over the summer while you're learning how this works, um, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, but if you have any questions on how to do things and later in the summer, I can actually so show you some more like intense things that we can do, uh, like how to cut out the background of a picture or how to put pictures into text. Um, I can show you some of that as well. So anything that you have questions on or want support with or have ideas about, you can just email me and let me know and I can support you. All right.